That is like whipped cream. Are you kidding me? Okay, I need to put it in my hair. I found nine products, nine on TikTok. That's a very low number. I found thousands. But these are the nine products that convinced me to buy them because people were just saying how incredible they are. And so here we are testing them today. Because I'm picky with the products that are like changed the game for me. I have, <laughs> I've been testing products for years now. This isn't new to me. This is uh, how many years? Over 10 for sure. I've tested them all, but here we are. We're gonna test some more stuff. How many times can I say test in this video? It's gonna be a lot. So we're gonna start with a product that I'm already behind on. Yes, I know this has been viral for, for like a month now, two months, I don't even know. It exploded online and I, I don't know why I just kind of ignored it. It's the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tint. It is a tint that is a blush. She's small, but she matches my nails. I don't know how this happens every single time. Something that I'm wearing matches some of the products like perfectly. It's not intentional. Got a little thing of jello. Like, no. Oh yeah, it does. It's kind of jelly-y. All right, <laughs> tinted too. I forgot about that. So I got the shade Spritz and um, she looks good. And I am now real realizing that I should probably make sure there are, you know, some very specific instructions I should be following. So first of all, really appreciate that they put a disclaimer on the website saying it's not edible. Don't, don't, we know it looks good. Don't, don't do it. Don't eat it. And like, I get it. It does look like jello. No, I'm just kidding. So it says swirl or swipe the stick directly onto your lips or cheek and it dries fast. So work one side at a time. That would have been the downfall for me. I get so stressed out when it's a product like this where it's like you have to you have to work quickly. If you, you want this product, you like this product. Better move fast though. Better know exactly how you want your blush to look. It says to swirl the stick. All right, that's where I want it. But blended though, then she said, Blend, blend, please, please blend, please blend. That's blended, right? I think, I think, I think it's blended. There was a split second in there. I haven't done my brows yet. I just realized I should have done that first, but I was really excited about this blush. My brows are looking a little skew -iff. I'm gonna try a different technique. I like this. Do I like it better? Do I hate it? Truthfully, at the end of the day, I think I just, I have too many blushes to <laughs> want to make this work. I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure that a lot of people are like, wow. I'm just like, no. I'm gonna try my fingers this time. I was gonna say the warmth of my fingers will help, but they are icicles right now. I'm probably making this worse. I'm just gonna use a brush. At least the brush is room temp. Listen, I don't know about, um, what do they call it? Sheer? I don't know about that. Maybe I maybe I applied a lot, a lot more than like, maybe you're you're supposed to it said swirl though it said swirl i guess i should try it on my lips then i have on one of my other favorite products you can watch last week's all right oh it's very cold it genuinely feels like i just took some jello and rubbed it on my lips is that where this came from did someone's kid do that and they're like you know what it's gonna make a great makeup product okay lips wait okay lips I really like oh yeah that's that's okay I like that I like that way more now I am gonna put a little bit of um gloss on top just a little bit I'm hoping that this wears well in terms of like throughout the day and it doesn't get really patchy or whatever I love the applicator for the lips for a tint a lot more than something like this this is like a brush and to me this is tiny and I, I understand to like get, you know, into like the little crevasses and stuff, but this applicator is way more stressful to me than this. This was like easy peasy. So if it wears well, I can see this as a really nice lip tint. I don't know if I would do this all the time for, for blush. That's just like, that's a lot. All right, brows. So I don't know if you can see or not, but I have, you know, brushed them up and used the little, um, where is it? This guy, the ABH Brow Freeze Gel. It's really good. I talked about this last week. Last week's video was dynamite. You should go watch it. Everything favorites, all of the best of the best. I think actually the Sephora sale is still on. So you should go, you should go check it out because like those, these are the dynamite products. And I always put on a gel first because I need it to dry and then I can use any sort of like a, like a colored brow product. So we're gonna be testing out the Build a Brow 
by Maybelline. It was a missed opportunity to make the O <laughs> a bear. Come on, Maybelline. It is a two-in-one brow pen and sealing gel. I missed the boat on that one. How did I not know that this was a clear sealing gel? All right, okay, fine. Fine, Maybelline. I will, t I will take off my brows for this because, okay, let me explain. I always put in like a gel first and let my brows dry because otherwise if I put in any sort of like a brow pencil or something and then put in the gel, all of the pencil's gone, gone. To me, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put in the, the felt tip thing, let it dry, it says 15 seconds, 15 seconds. And then I'm gonna put in the sealing stuff and all of that pen will disappear. That is my prediction as to what's gonna happen, but. Family, listen, you could prove me wrong. I have makeup remover right here. I will just take this off and I will redo my <laughs> foundation around it. Excuse the angry red skin for me trying to take all of this gel off. This is gonna take five ever. I feel like I'm all like crouched over like Gollum. I like how they were like, just let it set for 15 seconds. No problem, babe. It's gonna take me like 40 minutes to do them. That's the thing about brows. You don't really know until you brush them up with gel and then you're like, oh, that's, that's not even at all. I'm gonna let these dry for a minute. A few moments later. All right, that's probably been enough. Then you have this little teeny tiny sealing liquid. This is gonna turn brown immediately. Let's, uh, let's do this. First of all, why is this so small? for the precision. By the way, I don't even think I said anything. It's supposed to last for like 48 hours or 72 hours or a fortnight or something. Okay, so I probably have to like fill in a little bit up there, but okay, let's do the other side. All right, now let me like clean this up a little bit. Okay, is that any better? I can't tell. <sighs> I have no idea. Are those good? Do they do they look okay? I'll report back and let you know if they actually hold up though. I'll either put a note here or I'll film something later. But now we need to fix my hair. Now, is this bun cute? Actually, honestly, this is a cute bun. That's a cute bun. Good for me. I that never happens. You know when you really try and it takes like 47 tries and you're like, well, I guess it's just a ponytail today. I crushed that. All right, well, I have to take it out because we need to test some things. Number one on the list is uh, dry shampoo. And if you watched last week's video, you would know what my favorite dry shampoo is because it's the only one I use since learning about it. This one was very popular. And I honestly, I washed my hair two days ago and this is this is what we're working with right now. It doesn't look too bad, but I promise you this is this is not this is not it. It's um real greasy. The brand I have never tried before. This is Navy Hair Care, the Surge Dry Shampoo and Instant Lift Foam. I thought that was great because I don't love the sprays. I don't know. It just smells a lot and it just gets everywhere. I hate it. But foam I could get on board for foam. So they have very specific instructions on here. You turn it upside down and you shake vigorously. And this is also heat activated. So you need to apply it into your hair and then you need to activate it with a heat product, which is actually perfect because I have another one that we need to test. And I don't know, I don't know how much to, to put in. How much do you, how much do you do? Wait, that is like whipped cream. Are you kidding me? This thing needs to have a thing that says don't eat it. That looks like whipped cream. <gasps> Ooh, I just got on my nose. Ah! Dropping it now. I got too excited. Ooh. I tested another product that does this, but it's like a soap and I'm really excited about this. Okay, I need to put it in my hair. So I think, I like I have no idea how much to put in my hair here. Well, oh, it's very wet. Oh, please make my hair not so greasy. It smells really nice. And this is actually perfect because I'm also testing out, it's um, the Shark Speed Style like gloss finisher thing. And it's a blow dryer and it has all these really cool attachments to it. So while I get this into my hair, I'll show you when I first tried it. Let's try this. My hair, I'm gonna be honest, is mostly air dried. And I really tried not to 
I mean, it's probably still a little bit wet, but um, you know, light. What I'm most excited about is the gloss. I want, I want the gloss. Gloss me up. <laughs> Speed style. For whatever reason, I don't know, this looks real small. I don't know what, uh, why, but I was envisioning something that looked more like the Dyson. This is a little baby shark. So I guess I just... She's small but mighty. There's a bunch of buttons here that tell you if you can like increase the fan or heat or whatever. Okay, that is to 80%. Approximately. Maybe more? I'm not good with percentages. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a very gentle brush. Please don't break. Where's my like a heat protected thing here? Yeah. Pulled it out for another video. You probably already saw that one. If you didn't, you need to watch it. It's a great one. Oh, it smells so good. Now the two attachments that I can use today you can either do the rapid dry, which I mean that's pretty fun. And then the brush. Now, I'm not gonna do the brush, and I'm gonna tell you why. These brushes um, make me very nervous with drying my hair because you put a lot of tension. Tension on fragile hair. Not good. No bueno. So I'm gonna wrap it dry, and then I'm gonna use this guy. This is what I'm the most excited about. This little guy with the little, like, things in there. That's pretty fun. So I'm gonna brush my hair. Hang on. All right, that was mostly brushed. That was easy. I didn't even have to look at instructions. I really like it so far. It's got a bit of a tinny sound to it that I don't love. I know you're saying, Rachel, you're using a brush. How is that any different? It's different, okay? More control this way. Then I can always stop if I don't want to put my hair through a big knot and I'm not committed to it when it's attached to a blow dryer, all right? All right, I'm gonna finish this and, um, oh, apparently get a new battery for my phone. Not my phone, camera. All right, hair is dry. And I watched a tutorial to make sure I was using it right. And they have instructions on all the different tools based on your hair type. So if you have coily, curly, wavy, straight, fine, whatever it is, then you click on that and watch through and it shows you how to do it for your specific hair type, which I think is cool. Let's get this guy off. I just did a little bit to the outside. It's like, for whatever reason, when it does that, it was just, it looked wet. Like in a, in a, like a greasy, in a greasy way. Just double check that for a second there. It's like, wait, is my hair greasy? It literally just came from the shower. Wouldn't surprise me though. Maybe what I'll do, I won't touch this side and I'll just do this side and I will do the like gloss thing. All right, let's assess, shall we? This is the side where I did not use the, the glosser. This is the side where I did use the glosser. One side, two side. I don't feel like it did much of anything, if I'm honest, but I do wanna try it in the morning because now that I know that this glossing thing is for dry hair, so let's just, we'll, we'll try it in the morning. I'm back, I brushed my hair. It has a you know ponytail kink in it. Let's see if this guy does anything. I like that I can go underneath here. Is that smooth at all? I don't know. So like that's one side and the other side. I think it made a difference. My goodness, my hair. It's already, I washed my hair yesterday. It's already greasy. <laughs> is my hair smoother and straighter? Yes, it is. Is this probably less heat damaging than using a straighten iron? Yes, it is. If you don't have a blow dryer already, this is a really nice, compact, easy one, which I like. It's not doing anything for the like the little baby hairs in terms of like straightening them or like, you know, getting them to do what they need to do. Will it perform differently on other hair types? Probably. I like that it was cheaper than Dyson. I like that it has different attachments. I think that they came up with a unique product and it seems to work really well, which I appreciate. So it's in my hair and I have it here. So I figured we could blow dry it, but then also try the gloss finisher on two day hair. <laughs> All right, I think it's dry and I get the, I get the volume. Look at that. Okay, that's not just me, right? That's, that's voluminous. For me, I mean like the ends look grotesque, but let's like ignore that for a minute. Wait, do I have, vo I have volume in my hair. Okay, wow. Okay, well let's try the, the gloss finisher then. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we'll try it. Okay, before, after. Like I would say definitely, definitely shinier, right? All right, so definitely gonna try the Navy hair care stuff again 
on a day where it's not like, you know, two day old hair, cause it, it still feels greasy. Like it doesn't feel great, but I am getting more volume. It doesn't save these uh, ratty and disgusting dry ends though. So definitely gonna keep trying the navy stuff. Now, the hair, the shark thing. So what this is gonna do is it is going to gloss down hair that is already like done. Like, don't get me wrong, I love my Dyson. I ride or die Dyson. Not the curling thing though, I didn't like that. But if you don't have one and maybe you're in the market since I think I think the Sephora sale is still on, this might be a good one to look into a little bit more for you. Cause like, I would say that works. What else we got here? Ooh, I'm gonna show you, this is the wildest pillow I have ever seen. I've never seen anything like this and it showed up on my For You page and people were swearing by it. And it's like an anti-aging pillow, but again, this, I am, it looks like a like an octopus hugging your head. It is called the Save My Face pillow, and it has these little little phalanges here, and you know you put it around your face like this, and that way you're not smushing your face into a pillow that will you know cause wrinkles, I guess, long term. It's not enough to have a silk pillowcase or sleep on your back or any of these other things we're supposed to be doing. Now you need to get this. This spider pillow. It also looks like the, what brand is that? Oh, it's, um, it's, okay, imagine, you know the brand, it's like a, a kitchen brand, and it's a German brand. There's like two guys, and they're kind of standing like this. I hope my editor can put it up on the screen and she knows what I'm talking about. So the outside can zip off and you can wash it, which is crucial, that's very important. I feel like this would be very washable because again, it is so small. There's a full instructional video online on how to use it. Place small or large pillowette on top of your own pillow. Position your ear, the center of the pillowette's crescent. So essentially, you, you're sleeping like this on top of your pillow, if you can imagine your pillow here, so that your face isn't into the pit. Okay, that's interesting. I like that even from just the perspective of I hate having half of my face smushed into the pillow. So I'm always like turned at a weird angle to like prevent that. Because I also don't like sleeping on my shoulder. That's gotta be back, which brings my head into the pillow, but I don't want that. It's it's really awkward. I don't sleep the, the most ergonomically. So we'll try this guy. All right, update on this pillow. I have tried so many sleep things and I don't understand why, like why do they all work? I don't, so I feel like I need to demonstrate this because you need to understand why I like it. Honestly, I thought this was such a gimmick and it's not. So this is how I would normally sleep and I hate it because my nose is like in the pillow, but like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a better, more ergonomic way to do it, but like that's how I sleep. And this guy goes here and then boom, now all of a sudden I'm, I'm up more. So even if I do this, my, my, I'm not squishing my nose into the pillow. I'm sure it's like more for, <laughs> that's my main, I don't like squishing my nose. That's the main reason why I like it and I'm sure it's also beneficial because then I'm not, you know, you know, squishing my, well, I guess I'm kind of still smushing my face. I'm not fully smushing my face into the pillow and it's like a nice silk thing. This comes off and watches super easily. Listen, I didn't I didn't want to come on here and tell you that I really liked it, but I really do. I'm sure if you move around a lot when you're sleeping, this will just like come off. That's what it does to me. I'm never on it when I wake up in the morning. So that being said, like if you're someone that moves around a lot, I don't know how much this is actually gonna help with like you know, not smushing your face and wrinkles and all that. But it helps me fall asleep, which I really like. If you're someone that stays still while they're sleeping, um, maybe this is more beneficial for you because then, you know, you're not, you know, squishing your face. Anyway, I really like it. So the next product is the most expensive pair of pants I think I have I have ever bought, ever in my whole life. And I bought them, and you will understand when you see them, why I bought them. Maybe they were on the thumbnail, I don't know. Unfortunately, because a lot of you guys have been requesting it, anytime I try and close, you're like, where's dibs? Where's low? Where's B? Somebody's gotta be there to like, talk it out with you. And I was like, I get, I get it. And so I got dibs there to share in the trickery of these pants. So they're not long enough, unfortunately. Okay. Aren't they though? No, because like technically they shouldn't be sitting here. They should probably oh, be sitting see, here. I see, I see. <laughs> and then they're like I pants. I see, okay. You know what I'm saying? I love the the intention though. Do you know what this is though? Yes. Yes. What is this? Those are flood pants. No. These are supposed to be wide leg jeans, but do you know what's interesting about these? Can I tell you? Can yes. I tell you? Yes. They're sweatpants. Oh, <gasps> come here now. I know. <laughs> you shut your mouth. How did I not? 
like now up close, I can see like these aren't real buttons. Yeah. But from far away, I didn't. I didn't even notice that. They even have like the, what do you call it? Like the, these stripes that jeans have. I know, and the button and the zipper and everything. However, as you pointed out, they don't have, you can see where the, um, they're like painted the little on. buttons are like painted on. Again, it's like so close up. Yeah, you could, I would not have known unless I was doing this, which I hope people aren't doing that yeah. when you're wearing pants. <laughs> Actually, when you're not or when you are wearing pants. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, I wouldn't know. Do your, your pants have buttons? I have no idea. Who knows? The other thing though, is that the bottom of these, now, if you roll them down, you can see they have the nice little like seam. Yeah. However, they're sweatpant material, so they're gonna bunch up and then you can see the sweatpant So you have to like iron them. You know? But, like from afar, even with them bunched, like it looks like they're just frayed jeans. I know. Me. You should try these on because you're a little bit shorter than me. Yes. That's what needs to happen. Yes. That's what needs to happen. Yes. These are so comfy, oh my gosh. They look so cute on you. They are. Stop. And they're long, they got the perfect length. Yeah. Why do they sit better on you? How did you get them to do that? Why Shorter. do they look better? Shorter than you. They look so, yeah. These are so comfy, they're so comfy. This is unbelievable to be the level of comfort that I am for what this looks like. Truly, you can't tell me you wouldn't see her in public and be like, yeah, she's Those in jeans. Those are jeans, yep. Here Those I are am in my jeans. Yeah, that's nuts. Now, did you see the price of what those I are? I didn't, but I saw they were rag and bone, so <laughs> yeah. I wondered. They're so I wondered. Bone. Yeah. Can I, I take a guess? Oh, oh yes. Yes, take a guess while I look it up. I'm gonna say 225. Cause like at the end of the day, they are sweatpants. Yeah, there's only so much that rag and bone can get away with. This However. Oh no. <laughs> in Canadian, it's uh, a breezy 360. <gasps> you couldn't even be comfortable in them. I would just be thinking about their price. <laughs> I would put them on and be like, 360. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Listen, if you have someone or someones that loves you a lot for your birthday, it's great. Multiple people can yeah. go in on and it. And how tall are you? I am somewhere between 5'7 and 5'8. That is, I think, probably the Perfect. limit. Yeah, you cannot be any taller than that. Though. No, I don't think so. And then I think you could be 5'8. You could be 5'8 and not wear heels. Oh, yeah, you have to wear flat shoes. Flat shoes. Yeah. But like, Perfect. Yeah, and so comfy. I don't know. I don't know how the bum looks in the sweatpants, but you know, so good. Love it. So good. You just have to not have go to college. Yeah, exactly. Situations. You gotta pick. <laughs> are you gonna eat for three months, or are you gonna wear some saucy sweatpants that look like jeans? This is the thing, this and it, it's not a clear answer. I, no one. No, it's not. <laughs> Isn't that so unfortunate about the pants? I didn't want to spoil it, but like I was really sad. <laughs> I mean, I was sad, like as a person. My wallet was happy though, because I had to return them. <laughs> All my short girlies with money to burn. <laughs> I mean, they look great. They feel good. Really sad though. <laughs> anyway, next product. This is one that caught my attention because my algorithm realized that I was traveling because that's what algorithms do. It's called Steel B, and it's basically a thing that you can put on your razor. You probably just put it on in the shower too, now that I think about it. Or when you're traveling, it's gonna protect the razor from going dull. Because I don't know about you, but if I'm bringing a razor with me, I'm not bringing multiple blades, right? Like we're, just, we're leaving the one blade on. This is what it looks like. And basically you can stick the razor into that and it keeps it from, you know, deteriorating over time. And this is great because I know that some razors, it depends on like what brand you get and whatever, they just, they come with their own little plastic thing that you put on. But I get refills and the refills don't have those little plastic guard things. So this is a great solution for me because otherwise it's just sitting in the shower and on the thing and it's just gunk gumming up and out. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go get my razor and we're gonna see if this fit. Pro tip, by the way, never buy women's razors. I've tried them. I feel like I've tried them all. They all suck. I have this one. What brand are you? Edge. Manly. So this guy fits in like this. Ta-da. And then you can, you know, travel with it. You can just leave it there. Take it out of its little holder guy. I mean, that works really well. I mean, you'd have to be traveling a lot, I think, to justify it. I'm gonna use it in my shower and I'm gonna see if that just becomes an annoyance over time that I have to like keep taking it off and like putting it back in. I don't think it will, but like worth asking the question, right? It works though. It's not the most exciting product, but I was kind of excited about it because again, and then speaking of other products, I guess from the, from the bathroom, this product has been showing up on my feed 
forever. This is the same as like, you know that, that um, snail serum, the one that's been like viral for a thousand years across all sorts of platforms. I've, I've tested it before, but that guy. So this is showing up for me in that same way that the snail serum did. And people are just raving about this serum. And I believe it is, yeah, it's a Korean brand. It is um, Mixun and it's the Bean Essence. Bean Essence. It's, I think it's, yes, yeah, soybean ferment extract, barley seed, pear juice. You put a couple of drops of the essence into your hand and then you like pat it into your skin. But what's supposed to be really interesting about this is it's very like this thick kind of sticky consistency, which I think is not everyone's vibe, but it's supposed to work unbelievably, as is the case with a lot of different Korean skincare brands. They are truly ahead of their time. So we'll be trying this tonight. Okay, I showered. Da. Are there any instructions that I should know about? A few drops into hand. Tap over face, okay. Is that a, do you see that? It is um, definitely on the goopier side. Not that bad though. How do I describe this? It feels mildly oily but in a serum way, not in an oil way. It's not thin like an oil. It's mildly tacky at the beginning, but it doesn't feel tacky now. I don't mind it. I clearly don't have any results at this point, but I will keep you updated. I don't know what it is about this stuff, but I just, I keep reaching for it. It feels really good on the skin. It's like, almost like you're applying a gel oil, but it doesn't, it like dries down more like a gel than an oil. Really unique consistency. It seems to work well with a bunch of the different serums. I think I've used like three different ones and I just keep using it because I like how my skin is looking. I don't understand the magic of this, but I have bought some more um, because of this, I bought a whole bunch more um, Korean skincare. So we're going to try that out and um, I'll keep you posted. But um, yeah, I really like this. Do I have any sort of concrete evidence that this is making a huge impact on my skin? No, I don't have that. However, I do really like how this makes my skin feel and look. I like layering it. I just keep reaching for it. So do with that what you will, but I really like it. Let's hope that was good. I have no idea at this point. Future Rachel, I hope it worked out for you. Now on to the last product, last but not least. Now, many of you may know that I have been a sufferer of chronic back pain for years now. It's only spiraled from there. I laugh to keep from crying. But as of right now, it's I'm not in any sort of a flare up, which is exciting. I found some like little things that work. Let me know if you want me to talk about it more, but I won't bore you with the details. This is all to say this came up on my feed and it looks like a turtle and it says back on it. And then the tagline is lie back and treat yourself. So I had to buy it. It is called the back pod. What is the back pod you say? That's a great question. I would love to tell you. It has a German design award in 2013, but still got a very nifty kind of a, kind of a look here. I don't know, I feel like I'm looking under Franklin's shell if Franklin turned into a robot. I just, I don't know if there are any other Canadian girlies out there. Did you know that Franklin, like the turtle Franklin, apparently is not a thing in the US? That was a Canadian thing? I just grew up assuming that everyone knew. Like the Berenstein Bears, that, that's a thing, right? In the States, my editor will let me know. <laughs> She's American. <laughs> Do you know Arthur? You know Arthur, right? There's Arthur. He's an aardvark. My childhood. Lie back and treat yourself. Introduction on how to use the back pod. Why you have a neck or upper back pain. The eye hunch. Oh, it has pages for health practitioners on how to use it. For rib pain, massage therapy, thorax, spine, sco scoliosis. If the back pod feels too hard or painful, you're using it incorrectly. Really appreciate that as a note. Do not separate the green outer skin from the blue inner core. I mean, I won't, but why? That's what you showed on your packaging. That's what intrigued me. I was so excited. Don't do it though. Okay, it won't come apart really easily, so we won't do it. Anyway, over, over to the floor. Okay, I've done my due diligence. I've understood I must go get pillows now to use this. That's probably big enough. Okay, they want me to lie on it. So this is on like the middle of my spine, right between my shoulder blades. All right, you're supposed to lie on it 30 seconds at a time and then shift, you have to shift your position. How about like this, this is better? Oh no, I don't like that as much. Yeah, I see what he's saying. He's like, 
He's like, it shouldn't be painful. It's like, okay, but you're applying a, a disc thing on your actual spine. Well, obviously, you know, maybe talk to your doctor before doing this. So I have to move two inches up, not as high as the neck, and two inches down, but not lower than the, the bottom of my rib cage, and then side to side. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna report back. Hang on two seconds. All right, so I've been lying on it and like moving it around. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I've only used it once. I haven't used it multiple times. I think what I want to do actually is, um, my sister's a chiropractor, so I'm gonna ask her what her thoughts are on this, and I'll let you know. And the usefulness of it, I'm not fully, to be honest, understanding it. I, I understand the whole, like, stretching, you know, your back out, but to me, I really like, I'm gonna show you what I use. These chirp wheels you've been following me for a while you've seen these and you know my passion for the chirp wheels so they have three different sizes this is the middle sized one and it has a little spot it's like indented where your spine goes and it's nice and like foamy this thing oh that's a good stretch i'm personally a big fan of the mid-sized one as well as the small one the small one really gets the good like like zippering of the back oh so good but i'll also use it to help my posture when I'm sitting at my desk because you can kind of just put it at the back of your spine there. I love these so much. I, this has nothing to do with the video, I know, but like I'm very passionate about these. <laughs> I will link them. I will link them because they are so good if you are experiencing any sort of back pain. I love these so much that I make sure to pack one, usually the smaller one, but like I pack one of them um, to bring with me to the cottage in case I have any sort of like back issue. And like everyone has a chance to use it, <laughs> but yeah. The other thing, I, again, I will find out more on this pod thing and see what my sister thinks of it. But like, in the meantime, these things, oh, unbelievable. 10 million times over will I recommend that. So let me know what you think of these nine products. Which one was your fave? Top three, actually. List down below your top three and what was the most like, the, the most atrocious product I tried today. Let me know, I'm very curious. And give this video a thumbs up if you think we should, we need to do more of these. Which products do we need to test out next and see if they're worth it. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should subscribe here because we do new videos here every single Thursday. I have another channel, Saturday Videos on Rachel's Life. We do kitchen, home kind of stuff. Chris is on that channel a lot. Chris is my husband in case you are very new here. And check out these videos on the side. If you are new and you wanna see some more videos and what we're about here, check them out here. I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic, fantastic week and I'll see you guys all in the next one.